Hello, fellow ink drinkers, and welcome back to the Blind Girls Book Talk podcast. two sisters who love reading and love books and so what we've done is we've created this podcast in order to talk about the things that we love about books the things we wish we could change all of that good stuff this is a variety show so there is a bunch of different types of bookish content here it can range from bad retellings of stories to book to movie adaptation comparisons to recent reads, to buddy reads, the list really does go on here. But today we are actually going to be doing a book to movie comparison and we are going to be talking about Northanger Abbey, which is one of Belle's absolute favorite books. So what we're going to do is we are going to have Belle really take the reins for this one and go over what happens in the book briefly and then how the movie is different from the book. Okay, so pretty much the basic premise of the story is Catherine Moreland is the daughter of... Some people. I can't remember their names, but yeah. Some people. And she's one of many. So she is getting older and is 17. And her neighbors, who are very fond of her come over and are pretty much just like so Mr. Allen has to go to Bath for business and as his wife I have to go along can I take Catherine with me and her parents think about it and then they're like well what harm can she get into so she goes off to Bath adventures in Bath happen she meets Henry Tilney and he knows about muslin 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 Mus- muslin. Lin. Muslin. Muslin. Yeah. He does. <laughs> the one thing I remember. The one thing you remember. And so they meet and blah, blah, blah. Their meeting is actually very funny. If you haven't read the book, highly recommend because their meeting, it, it always makes me smile. And so then, you know, more stuff happens. She runs into the family of her brother, her older brother's best friend. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I'm just trying to be quick. More stuff happens. And eventually the Tilneys ask her to go to North Hanger Abbey with them. Because they're leaving Bath and heading home. And the Allens are like, well, what harm could she get into? <laughs> Yes, so she goes on an adventure. Yeah, so she goes. You find out that the Tilney's mother had died, and she gets close with Henry and his sister Eleanor, and they're having a grand old time, and then his father comes back and is like, yeah, no, she has to leave right now, and it's the middle of the night. She gets shipped out. More stuff happens. She arrives back home, and everybody's like, well, what are you doing here? And she's like, I thought that the father killed the mother. Yeah. And voiced her opinion to Henry. And she's like, he's probably mad. He probably told his father. That's why I got kicked out. My stupid imagination. And so then later Henry shows up and he's like, yeah, no, you had a right to think that what you did because my father is a jerk. But he only made you leave because... You aren't as rich as he thought you were supposed to be and blah, blah, blah. And it pretty much ends with Henry and Catherine getting married. Yep, that sounds about accurate. Although, quite frankly, I think my bad retelling is much, much better, but that's just me. Yeah, no. So, knowing now that, where are some of the the major differences or the differences that stand out to you between the book and the movie? The whole thing with the Thorpes 
and Catherine, I feel like isn't really like, of course, it's touched on in the movies, but like everything that goes on, I feel like happens more in the book. Like her friendship with Isabella and, you know. Okay, so the Thorps really aren't in the movie. Well, they are because, you know, they do drive the plot in Bath, but like it's more fleshed out received the- and, you know, you find out that Isabella, who was in love with Catherine's brother, the engagement was broken off because all she wanted was money and blah, blah, blah. That's kind of more in the book than I'd so say in the movie. So it's it's more fleshed out in the book then. Yeah. Like, they, they're still there and they're still driving the plot. They just aren't, like, the full extent that they are in the book. Yes. That seems fair to me. I mean, I've only seen the Northanger movie once. And do you know, because I know there's a couple different versions. Do you remember which one this was, by the way? I will look it up. Okay. Because I know we have looked at a couple different versions of Northanger, or there are a couple different ones out there. So I do want to point out which one we're using just because... I think that's important when you're, you know, doing this kind of thing to know which version you're going with. And that being said, too, you know, yes, this is one of Belle's favorites, but also for like something like Pride and Prejudice, where we both love it. I'm not a huge, huge fan of Northanger. So for me to, you know, see kind of many other different movie versions, that's not going to be one that I necessarily would do so that is why we're only basing this version off of one movie it is the 2007 version 2007 okay i have others have i watched them no yeah okay so 2007 version then okay so then what is another difference other than the thorns thorps the thorps and their shenanigan shenanigannaries I'm trying to think, and I honestly can't think of any. They're probably, and I'm just missing it because my brain is currently fried. (laughs) But, like, off the top of my head, I really can't. Well, okay, so here's one that I kind of remember. And, again, granted, this probably is because you are going from a medium like movie to from a medium like book, right? But I feel like there is a lot of stock put in the dream sequences in the movie. And I don't really remember. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, The movie movie does have those dream sequences and in the book they are like non-existent. Yeah. So I think that that is a huge difference from my perspective of it, you know, because those, those dream sequences, I think if I remember correctly, they go from like they not only show that she has this really vivid imagination, but it shows kind of how her feelings for Tilney kind of deepen. Yeah. And I mean, granted, in the book, you have it from you get to see what's happening inside her mind. So like the book is able to give you, you know, while she's awake, how deep her imagination is right a movie can't really do that as much so you know the dream sequences are their way of of doing that yeah Yeah. which and and again that is definitely a this is because this go went from a book to a movie deal but you know it's still for me that's still a huge difference between between it all now that being said i know when we were doing our pride and prejudice our big pride and prejudice talk we were talking a lot about how accurate the characters were to their novel counterparts would you say that these characters are pretty accurate in this version yes i'd say i mean i have no complaints i i I've only seen one of the couple versions I've had, so I can't really, like... Compare it to the others. Yeah. But just for, you know, kind of how the the one movie version of Pride and Prejudice was kind of like the gold standard that we kind of based all of the other versions off of. I'd say this is like of, a gold standard. This is probably going to be, without seeing the others, and granted, you can't really say for sure until you see the others, but... It seems like this one might be just kind of the gold standard for the the book. Okay, so characters are pretty accurate. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, 
But wasn't it a big thing in the book that Isabella, which is Catherine's brother's friend's sister, she was like flirting with the the Tilney's dad? Was no, that a it thing? it was the older brother. It was the older brother. Okay, gotcha. There were too many Tilneys. Well, here's the thing. They're both Captain Tilney. Yeah. So that's why I was very so confused. So you like, really have to watch whether it's junior or senior. Yeah. Which is not something that I really paid attention to. So I thought it was the dad for a hot minute. So I was just kind of like, oh, that's where we're going? Oh, no. But, okay, so the that doesn't really happen in the movie, does it? No, it's touched on. It's touched on? Because yeah. I don't remember that part. Yeah. it It's there. Okay. That's cool. I'm just checking in and making sure because that was... I'm trying to remember, like, bits of the story that I remember versus the movie and trying to, to find if I can find something, too. Yeah. Honestly, like, I feel like the 2007 does a really good job with the book. Yeah. I... I would have to say I agree with you. I mean, again, it's not my favorite, as we can tell from the bad retelling, and it's not something that I really gravitated towards. But I feel like, yeah, for the case of this movie versus the actual book adaptation, this is probably a pretty good comparison to what the actual, like, yeah, it, from the actual book. It's it's pretty fair comparison wise yeah i'd say again nothing can beat the book because austin can do no wrong (laughs) yeah i mean yeah i can understand that like austin is a phenomenal writer and even though i've only read a couple of her works i mean one of them is my favorite the others maybe one day i'll read them but also i don't know like For me, I feel like Pride and Prejudice, Pride and Prejudice is just kind of lightning in a bottle for me. So I don't think I'm ever going to get that again. You know what I mean? For another Austin book. But that's just kind of my opinion on it. And like that makes sense for some people. That is how it is. But I mean, again, I read Northanger Abbey at a certain point in my life where it just clicked. Right. But, like, the thing that makes me so upset is I feel like... Because everybody knows Pride and Prejudice. Like, whether or not you've read it, you know the name. Right. You know the name. You you should know it's Jane Austen. Right. And, you know, that's the book that made her known. But I always feel so bad for, like, Northanger Abbey because, like, compared to every other book... Yeah, it's... It's, like, it seems like the forgotten one, which is so sad because it was the first book she wrote... Yet it was the last one to be published. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like when you're talking Jane Austen, like, everybody thinks, like, definitely the Pride and Prejudice. And then you go to, like, the Emmas and, like, the Persuasion and... Sense and Sensibility. Sense and Sensibility. And then, like, maybe then Mansfield. Like, I definitely think that Northanger is... The, the low man on the totem pole. Well, maybe it's kind of tied with Mansfield because... Mansfield and them are kind of tied. But, like, here's the thing. I feel like more... Everybody's issue with Mansfield is the whole cousins thing. Right. Which, again, looking at it from today's lens, I get that. Yeah. But, again, different time. Yeah, different time, though. But, you know, it's... I liked... I liked Mansfield, but... That's we'll get into that a different day. Okay. Well, with that note, we are about out of time for today's episode. We hope that you have enjoyed this comparison between Northanger Abbey's book to one of the movie adaptations. Of course, if you like what you've been listening to, if you like the show, please consider leaving a like, leaving a review, leaving a comment, sharing this episode with your friends. It would definitely really help us to grow the show. And of course, if you don't want to, that's fine no pressure but you know like I said it does help us to grow the show and then next time we are going to be talking about well actually I will not be here oh that's right you won't be here next week no I will not you are going to be having 
I'm going to be having host. a guest host with me. And we are, me and my guest are going to be talking about our thoughts on the love hypothesis. Oh, hypothesis? The love hypothesis. My gosh, I wish I could talk. But with that, we will see you guys. Well, I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.